Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing fantastic. I'm Mystical, and today I'm going to be bringing you the latest in VR and AR news. We've got quite a diverse list ahead of us today, including some things about the Quest, some things about the PSVR 2, some things about the Apple VR headset, and just overall a ton more. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. First things first, the Quest. And this is a very exciting one. One that I feel like is going to impact a ton of you guys, but you may not know about it yet. The V51 PTC came out a few days ago. It's brought massive improvements, including Android 12 and local dimming to the Quest Pro. However, it's also brought a different feature in the background, unnoticeable to a lot of users. And that is to boast the Quest 2 and the Quest Pro. With the jump to Android 12 also comes ADB over Wi-Fi. And for those of you that don't know what ADB is, this might mean absolutely nothing. Nothing. So let me try to explain, as this could change the way you use your Quest. ADB is Android Debugging Bridge. It's what we use to install APKs or run commands on our Quest from our computer or our phone. And that's the big deal. You used to need a phone or a computer in order to run commands on the Quest. That is no longer the case. You can run these commands directly from inside the headset itself. This is massive for installing APKs directly from the headset, as well as the fact that you can now run mods from inside the headset itself. You have a mod that needs to change the CPU or GPU level. You no longer need to reconnect the device to a computer every single time you want to run that. You have a mod that you want to boost your resolution? You no longer need to plug into a PC. In the past, anytime you wanted to run one of these mods and you've restarted your headset, you would need to re-plug in the device into a computer or a phone and start ADB over Wi-Fi from there. This now means that the SideQuest mobile app for the Quest could get a massive upgrade and could include all the features it includes on PC into that app right there on the headset, as well as basically any other mod you want to run. This is going to be massive for Quest modding in the future, or any ADB command that you might want to run. It could possibly allow for things that we don't know about yet as well, like for example running music in the background. I don't entirely know how this would work, but now with all this power directly there on the headset itself, we have a ton of possibilities. This is super exciting and I cannot wait to see what developers do with this newfound power. Let's move on to the next piece of news. Oh yeah, this is a really, really exciting one. VRChat Mobile is coming. How long have you wanted VRChat to be available on yet another platform? Currently, VRChat isn't available on that many platforms at all. However, it is a social app that a lot of people play even when they don't have access to a VR headset because it is available on PC. Well, now on the 30th of March, a new developer update was posted on VR chat. I feel like a lot of people are going to be excited for this one. Launch plans to start VR chat on Android mobile will only be available to VR chat plus users. We want to get you a build ASAP to try out and start working with, while also allowing us time to refine the UI and UX before a full public launch. This also allows us to get your feedback about the app so you can help us track down issues and annoyances. We plan to launch VRChat on Android mobile to VRChat Plus users within three to four months. This timing could change. It depends entirely on how the development process goes. A full public release will follow our VRChat Plus release, ideally three to six months after the VRChat Plus release. As previously noted, this may change. This date depends on how much work we need to do to improve the UI and UX. The app will not be available freely on the Play Store for the VRC Plus release. This means you can't search for it. You will get a unique URL with beta access to get into the VRC Plus release. Plans are pending, but we'll let you know how this goes. And then of course, iOS when? I expect this to be one of the first questions people ask. We are working on an iOS version of VRChat, but that is further out. The challenge here is content. Since iOS uses a completely unique and different graphics framework, this means you would have to upload content built for iOS, which means three builds for one piece of content. Not ideal. So we're working on it. More on this eventually. Eventually is like soon, except even further out patience. To me, this makes perfect sense. And while I feel for iOS users, VRChat does already exist on Android devices. All Quest standalone headsets are Android. And therefore, I see that porting VRChat to Android mobile devices would be easier. Still difficult, but definitely easier than porting them to iOS, since the build already exists. And I imagine that they would also be able to run basically to the same capacity that Quest headsets run at. Same graphics profile, same worlds, things like that. 
that. But overall, I am very, very excited for VRChat to finally be coming to mobile. I've wanted this for like a very, very long time, and the fact that it's finally happening puts a big smile on my face. And right on to another social update. Rec Room, a massive social game available on many platforms and VR devices, is now working on body tracking and hand tracking. I see that they are following in VR chat's footsteps, which is always absolutely fantastic. The more games we have with full body tracking and hand tracking support, the better, as human interactions and social VR are very, very important. I feel like they add to the immersion a lot. Full body avatars will be optional and available regardless of whether you have body tracking equipment. Here's how Rec Room describes how the system will handle users without body tracking and the transition between standing and thumbstick movement for those with it. In VR, we don't actually know where your legs and feet are located and have to rely on an artist's interpretation. Since we do know where your head and hands are, we try to pose your avatar to respect your real VR pose. However, if you're using full body tracking, then we'll know where your legs and feet are. So we can dynamically switch between using avatar animations and VR tracking information to pose your lower body, depending on that situation. While you're running around, we'll continue to play animations on your legs, despite the fact that your real legs aren't actually moving, so that you appear to be running to other players in Rec Room. Once you stop walking in-game, we'll blend back into showing your real leg positions so that you can dance and pose however you like. Rec Room also says its controller-free hand tracking will take a little longer than body tracking, suggesting it should ship late this year at its earliest. So in case you guys are into Rec Room, you can be looking forward to some absolutely massive updates coming hopefully later this year. Body tracking and hand tracking, again, according to me, are two of the most important things for social VR to be immersive. So I'm super excited for this and cannot wait for it to come out. The Apple. WWDC event has been announced with a very interesting picture mind you a lot of people have been speculating is this a lens is it a Fresnel lens because a headset of that price should not come with a Fresnel lens so let me tell you more about it Apple has announced WWDC will take place on June 5th to 9th. Worldwide Developer Conference is a yearly developer-focused Apple event where upcoming versions of its operating systems and SDKs are revealed, and sometimes new Mac hardware too. Bloomberg's Mark Gurman wrote in February that Apple's rumored AR slash VR headset will be unveiled during WWDC 23, and he's sticking by that reporting today. This matches what prominent supply chain analyst Minji Kuo claimed in December. Full article will be down below in case you guys want to read more on the Apple VR headset, but we have enough videos about that on this channel, so we're not going to go deep into the headset itself. However, what I find interesting is that there seems to be conflicting information on this, but if we jump onto Road to VR, we get a different piece of information. Apple's mixed reality headset delayed to late 2023 amid decreased confidence in market appeal. A respected supply chain analyst reports that Apple is tamping down enthusiasm for its upcoming mixed reality headset, which was rumored to see its big announcement at Apple's worldwide developer conference in June. In a tweet, Kuo reports Apple is delaying the release of its MR headset due to decreased optimism in recreating the iPhone moment the company was hoping to achieve with the device. Kuo, an analyst at Asia Pacific Financial Services Group, TF International Securities, is widely considered one of the most accurate voices in predicting Apple releases. Does this mean that the Apple VR headset will be delayed once again and we will not actually get to see it during WWDC? Well, that I'm not certain about, as the whole situation is definitely very very weird here, especially if they've released a teaser image and that teaser image is actually a VR headset lens. But of course, it could just be something completely different. But yeah, all we could do is wait for WWDC and see what actually comes of it. And some Beat Saber news. Beat Saber has added six new songs to Panic at the Disco music pack. Hot on the heels of the revamped Imagine Dragons pack from last month, Today, Beat Games is updating its Panic at the Disco music pack. The update brings songs from Panic's 2018 album, Pray for the Weekend, and 2022 album, Viva Las Vengeance, while overhauling the pack's existing four tracks. The new tracks available today are Hey Look Ma, I Made It, Say Amen, Saturday Night, Viva Las Vengeance, Tensing's Not a Crime, Sugar Soaker, and Crazy equals Genius. So, in case you guys are interested, you've now got six more songs to play inside Beat Saber's music pack. And we're gonna end off on an interesting note. Apparently, IDC analysts claim that PSVR 2 launch sales are low. IDC, 
International Data Corporation is an analyst firm that sells reports detailing its estimates of market size, market share, and unit sales of popular product categories. Analysts use sources in the supply chain, though their accuracy can vary widely, especially for lower volume products. IDC told Bloomberg News that Sony is likely to have sold around 270,000 PSVR 2 units between the launch and the end of March. In October, Bloomberg reported Sony was producing 2 million units for launch. In January, the outlet reported Sony was disappointed with pre-orders and projections were cut dramatically. When asked about this, Sony told us that we have not cut PSVR 2 production numbers. The original PlayStation VR took just under 8 months to sell 1 million units, so it's too early to say whether the PSVR 2 is doing better or worse, as more games were released for the platform, and holiday seasons saw attractive discounts on hardware bundles. I would also say that it's too early right now to say whether the PSVR 2 is going to do better than the PSVR 1. I would sure hope it does. It looks like an amazing headset, and thousands of people around the world are enjoying it. And I am on track to try one, as I still haven't done that yet. The people that have tried it are telling me it's quite a mind-blowing experience, with the haptics inside the headset and the completely redesigned controllers. I'm looking forward to see what Sony does, and with the release of new titles coming to the headset, hopefully that bumps up sales. But either way, that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you have a fantastic day or night. If you guys like this one, please do leave a like. If you just liked it, I guess this button works too. But let me know why down below. If you guys are not yet part of the community, check out the Discord and check out the Reddit down below. I want to see you posting your spicy memes on there. And thank you so, so much to all the lovely names going off to my right right now. Those guys are my Patreons. And you guys are helping me out so much right now. Seriously, I cannot thank you enough. And as usual, if you guys want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.